There's a ton of different skills that you need to have to get the most from your e-mountain bike when compared to mountain biking, regardless of your skill level. It's not just the electronics, but the power and the possibilities too. Turn on and tune in to find out what you might be missing. Now an e-bike's motor requires the correct cadence to get the most out of it. And sometimes something we see out on the trails is we've got light fit riders dropping behind more experienced heavier riders purely because their inability to hit that correct cadence range on the motor. Now depending on brand, that RPM wants to be around 75 to 80 RPM. An integral part of cadence is selecting the right gear. With an e-mountain bike, you have to be sympathetic with gear changes or be snapping teeth off cassettes or snapping chains regularly. You need to preempt gear changes and you can't dump a huge load of gears all at once. It's all about spinning and never grinding. The amount of assist that you get from your motor will vary from brand to brand, but something that will be in common will be the amount of support. Now this will usually be eco, trail and boost mode. In general, the more power you demand from your battery, the less range you're going to get. Now, depending on where you live in the world, you're going to have an assisted top speed of either 25 kilometers per hour or 32 kilometers per hour. And it's quite easy to hit that assisted top speed, especially if you're in those higher power modes such as turbo. So all you need to do here is just knock that power mode down or maybe switch up where you're riding. One of the biggest differences to technique is in climbing. You'll be climbing steeper and more technical, which in turn requires a lower center of gravity and usually keeping the seat down. We've done a video all about this. And that's down in the description down below. Most e-bikes come with an app in which you can access a whole load of features, update your bike's software system, collect data, check the health of motors and batteries, tune into the range, plan routes and get some fitness related features and connect to them with your smartphone. More than this, you can adjust the power of the bike, the acceleration of the motor and linked into that adjust how much range you can get from your battery. It's a whole new world of possibilities. There's more than just the apps. There's some fine details such as Bosch Hill Start, Walk Mode, takes a while on some bikes. Check out my electric wheelbarrow technique, extended boost on Bosch, shuttle mode, range finders, fitness features, third party that you connect to, using and changing displays. And there's how you ride too. You can go flat out with full power, or you can go low power and long distance. You can go high heart rate, or low heart rate, the choice is yours. You might need to rethink about where you ride. As mentioned, having that bike restricted to 25 kilometers per hour or 32 kilometers per hour can be pretty tall if you have long sections of road or flat fire track as you'll be pedaling over that assisted speed. At the same time, you have a bike that's way more capable on proper off-road terrain. Try to mix things up with keeping things off-road or ride a route that will be below your speed limiter. It's time to rewrite those old routes or maybe try passes new. A setup for your e-bike will differ slightly from that mountain bike. One thing that is super important on your e-bike is to get that sag dialed in. If you're running too much sag, you're going to be risking pedal strikes and all sorts of weird handling going on from your bike. Also think about the tires and the rubber that you're running. Make sure you've got the pressure dialed and the right sort of rubber for the terrain that you're riding in. And one last thing is you're going to be using that seat a lot to so make sure that's really in its best position when it comes to those climbing sections of those trails that you're going to be riding. You're going to be spending a lot of time in this to so make sure it's set up right. And maintenance wise, an e-mountain bike will require a little bit more maintenance than a mountain bike, more just on parts such as the drive chain, the chain, the cassette, brake pads, and sometimes tires too. Just those little things which are a little bit more consumable on your e-bike. Now hills are one of the things that can ruin most mountain bike rides, but that definitely isn't the case when it comes to e-mountain bikes. Think of it this way. With hills with an e-bike where well, you can tackle them in a high power mode with a low heart rate. 
or you can go a low power mode with a high heart rate. And you're gonna be tackling hills you never thought you'd be able to conquer ever before on that e-mountain bike. But to do this, you're gonna require a new skill set. Now we've talked cadence, the same applies, but you now need to tune into your body position. Weight distribution makes a huge difference on climbs. You literally need to wrestle your bike around on those climbs. One minute the front wheel is gonna be lifting, then all of a sudden the back wheel's spinning. You have to shift your weight around back and forth to compensate this. Then there's mode choice. Look ahead, plan your line, decide whether it's momentum that carries you through a section or just your motor's power. And lastly, your seat position, lower your seat, and lower your center of gravity to increase the grip available to your rear tire. Seems crazy, but it really works on these slippery technical climbs. Oh, and did I mention about using your brakes to climb too? Yep, you can use your rear brake combined with your crank input to use your motor almost like a clutch on a motorcycle to limit the rear wheel's power and traction. And I've done a video all about this. And again, I'll link that down below. Depending on the weight and the travel that your current mountain bike has, the e-mountain bike is a very different beast when pointed downhill. The extra weight of the bike equates to more speed on the trail. It gives you more grip, it enhances the suspension action, and therefore it's gonna be faster down that hill than ever before. You might have to rethink those braking points. You need to rethink about using the added momentum that an e-bike gives you to be smooth on a trail to maintain that flow. If you're riding in a stop-start style, it can be hard to bring the e-bike up to speed after a stall. Maneuvering the bike around at slow speed may require more input or maybe even new techniques. Again, it's about timing and technique. Watching the pros such as Josh Bryson in action, the weight's hardly holding those guys back. But when your wheels are on the ground in fast technical terrain is where an e-mountain bike really stands out over a mountain bike. With its low down weight, it never really gets that wild or knocked off line, meaning you can point and shoot and just hold on tight. And that's a crazy skill in itself, just to trust the bike in those scenarios. Something that is a massive standout from a regular mountain bike. So there we have it. E-mountain biking might look like mountain biking from the outside, but there's a few skills you definitely need to dial in to make sure you're getting the most out of your e-bike once you've made that switch from mountain bikes to these amazing machines. Give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Get involved in the comments box down below if there's anything you can add to this video. Make sure you subscribe to us here on EMBN. We'll see you out there on the trails.